are, that we're able to worship you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you're in control of all things, Lord. And Father, with that posture and that understanding, Lord, that's why we worship you, God. Because simply, because of who you are, Lord. And we bless you in Jesus' name.
the blood today to their memory, to their emotions, to their minds, to their experience in the name of the Lord. And I thank you that I'm speaking the most powerful thing between heaven and earth today and in all of creation, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ be against every principality and power of the enemy that would want to weigh you down with guilt and shame and cause you to be like the prodigal, wistful about what it would be to be like it back at the Father's house. And I hear its place, I call for a fresh oil of anointing. Lord, lift their heads today. Put that crown of righteousness upon their head. Let them be aware of it, the robes of righteousness. The crown of sonship, O oh God, in the name of the Lord. I thank you for it in Jesus' precious name. Remain standing. Give Jesus a clap offering as we prepare. The elder has taught the living sin of scripture. Scripture said, Good morning, Life Church. Good morning. The scripture said, Out of our belly shall flow. Rivers of living water. Amen. Waters are plural. River is singing. He's saying, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So today we continue to let the Holy Spirit take control this morning. As we meditate on his word. And he says, commit your ways to me. He says, meditate on my word. Learn of me. So, the scripture today it's found on the back of your bulletins. Psalm one night, Psalm nineteen, verse seven through fourteen. The teachings of the Lord are perfect. They give new strength. The rules of the Lord can be trusted. They make plain people wise. The orders of the Lord are right. They make people happy. The commands of the Lord are pure. They light up the way. Respect for the Lord is good. It will last forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are completely right. They are worth more than gold, even the purest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even the finest honey. By them your servant is warned. Keeping them brings great reward. People cannot see their own mistakes. Forgive me for my secret sins. Keep me from the sins of pride. Don't let them rule me. Then I can be pure and innocent of the greatest of sins. I hope my words and thoughts please you. Lord, you are my rock, the one who saves me. Thank you, Lord. We come before you today just to say thank you, Lord. For all the little things and all the big things and all the things in between, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you. For you are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And your greatness is unsearchable. Hallelujah. You are Alpha. You are my name. The beginning and the end. You're everything we need, Lord, everything we ever want, ever hope for. You are it, Lord. And we are so grateful to say if all else fails, one thing we know for sure, we have Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you have everything you need. Everything you need. Let us never forget that, Lord, every waking moment of our lives as we walk through these doors, as we walk through circumstances, as we walk through relationships, as we walk through problems, as we walk through trials, as we walk through blessings, let us never forget that if we have you, Lord, we have everything. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let all of my soul and all of this blessing be blessings on your name. In Jesus' name. moving around, please, uh, as we receive a word from the Lord. I hear the Lord say, and he tells me to do it as he says it, but I don't 
hear the Lord say, I'm turning it around. I hear the Lord say, you've been praying and you've been asking me, turn it around for your glory, God. And I come to tell you this day that my ears are open to your cry. My ears are open to your prayer. For did I not to say, if you delighted yourself in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. I say to you, look to your body, turn it around. I say to you, I'm looking at your checkbook, I'm turning it around. I see the situations of your life, and I'm going to turn it around. And you're look, going to look at the same thing but with different eyes. You're going to look at the same person and you're not going to see them like you saw them before. You're looking, looking at the same promise and it's going to become alive because of this day I say to you that I'm turning it around. Look at your house. I'm turning it around. Look at your job. I'm turning it around. I see this church. I've lifted it off its foundations and I've Spun it around, and I'm putting it back on solid ground. I say to you, look at your hands. You say that they're weak, and I cannot do what you've asked me to do. And I say to you, look again, because I'm turning it around. I say to you, look at your feet, and you say that they are so weak, and they cannot walk, and they stumble, and I have no strength. But I say to you this day, when I send a word from the spirit realm, when I look at the cross that you have laid yourself before and the blood that I have shed for your life, I say to you, look again, because I'm turning it around. What have you looked at that has become bigger than me? I say to you, I'm opening your eyes so that you're going to see what you couldn't see before. You said, but my eyes see what's there. I see it, I touch it, I feel it. Don't tell me it's not real, but I tell you, the eyes of the spirit are greater than the eyes of the flesh, and I will speak to your situation, and I will cause motion and movement. I will remove the obstacle. I will raise up the low place. I will flatten the mountain. I tell you to take a step of faith. You want to see it first before you take a step. But I tell you, take a step first, and I will show you what I said. I will manifest the word spoken in the spirit realm, and it will become flesh. For I am the word that was made flesh. I stand amongst you this day, and I say, do not look at your past. Put down the thought and cast it before me, that thing that has set itself up against who I am and what I can do and the price that I paid. I call you this day to be men and women of faith. Stand true to my word. Represent me by standing on my word. Take your place in the spirit realm. You have been driven back by words of man, by declarations of the signs of the times, you have cowered from the things that I have said because you are afraid that if you take your place, I will not show up. But I tell you this day, I am showing up and I am turning it around and your prayer will be answered and the glory of the Lord will be seen upon you, says the Lord your God.
you to take that anointing. Declare it over them in the name of the Lord. Not tomorrow, not next week, but right now. That's the promise of God. And His promises are yea and amen. Strongholds of the enemy, be removed. Mountains, be brought low. Minds, be healed. Come on. Come on. Great blessings on you. Invoke that word of blessing upon you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I declare it's not my mind, it's not my power, but it's by the spirit of the, it's not my human ingenuity, but it's by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. It's not, it's done. It's not going to be done. It's done in heaven and in earth. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Strongholds, you've got to go. Depression, I break your back in the name of Jesus. Spirits of heaviness, I break your influence in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That fear, I break your influence. Familiar spirits that tell people to the past, how dare you trespass on the property of God. There's only one set of keys, and we have the keys of the kingdom. And I declare it's unlawful in the earth. The same thing that's unlawful in heaven. Trespassers of the enemy, we cast you out in the name of the Lord. Bodies be healed for the glory of God. Reports from the doctor come into alignment with the word of God. Temples of the Holy Spirit be filled with the glory of God. Our prayers have got to go in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, you're a wasting spirit. You have no right to affect the body of Christ.
your right elbow. I don't know if it's a chip bone. There is something with the ligament. But just put your hand right there. We're going to thank the Lord. Taking place. 
place and you feel as though you will not make it through, understand that this is necessary because in these last days, everything is lining up to, to my name and under my headship and my authority and it is commanded to give me glory. Even the works of the enemy are under my control that they should now work to give me glory, says God. I am the I am. Given the enemy credit and understand that he is under my control and my watch, but I have changed things in your life, says God, so that your heart of devotion will be purified. And I can ask you, lovest thou me? And you will look around at the things that have fallen aside that you thought you could not do with or that you had to trust in and the things that have been broken that you believed or that you held to. And now that I've stripped them away and as I am stripping them away, you found your place, yourself at a place of desperation saying, God, will I make it? But in the course of these events, I am drawing you closer to me, says God. I have tenderized your heart to my presence. I've caused you to look to me, to think about me, and to draw near to me. And all of this is redemptive, says the Lord. It will not be your end, but your birth, says God. It will be me raising you up out of an ashing of sorrow, discontent, and disappointment. And I will cause my Somebody said, well, 
well, explain it to me. And I told him, I said, do you know why that it's called spirits? I said, do you know why it's called spirits? And I said, I said, when you're under the influence of alcohol, to the point that you're not in control, the, the door and gateway of your soul is unattended. And anything can get in. Same way the Bible says, whoever you yield your members as servants to obey his servant you are. If you're sitting at home watching something that you shouldn't. And you've advocated the authority of the gateway of your eye. Don't get mad at God if a spirit of perversion gets in. But I've sat with, out and out, and there's no way I can betray anybody's confidence by telling you this. But I've sat with too many people recently. Families and couples that are saying, it's tearing my home apart. It's tearing my home apart. And I uh, had someone to come to me recently as their marriage is a blessed, a blessed situation. You never know it from the, from the outside. And said, Pastor, I'm paying a price that we tried to live that lifestyle and stay in the church. And, and now my spouse doesn't want to be married to me. And said they've fallen out of love with me. And they have to have the bar scene lifestyle. And they, the spouse said, I've made a terrible mistake. I thought we could do both. But remember this. And, and you're talking to somebody that I started drinking, heavy drinking at age 12. And fell in love with the first drink. It was old crow. Loved it. First drink I took, I, I just loved it. Drank regularly and heavily ever since that. Got into a whole lot of other stuff that I wish I'd never gotten into. Drugs. And I lived hard and, and bad. For, for Did things that, that, that I, I regret to this day. So I know what God brought me out of. And I'm going to say it again. When you drink too much, you lose control of your the door to your soul. And I meant to look it up last night to find out how many deaths there are a year by drinking and driving. I'm sorry, I just can't reconcile it. Can't lay around with the devil and the tools that he used. Can you imagine the devil going to the bars and saying to everybody that's there, now I want y'all to go to church Sunday because a little bit of church isn't going to hurt you. In the dream, there's several parts to it, but I remember I had found a fountain of living water. And I can't tell you if it was a well, I can't tell you if it was a river, ocean, or, or, or whatever, but I had found, I can describe this, this, I can see the water and how refreshing and nourishing it was and how crystal pure, clear that was. I mean, I can kind of almost taste it right now. And... Um, so I, I was frantic to get it to people. I don't know if I was in a desert or an area, but I knew I wanted to get it to people. In fact, I went a little distance, and I, I saw this long, like the reflecting pool in Washington, D.C., concrete reflecting pool. And a lot of the people that I know had gathered around it, and they were defending it and protecting it, and they had an affection for it. And... Uh, so when I got over to it, it was a, a pool of water. And later when I was telling, I think, my sister-in-law about it, I called it a trough. Could be like a concrete trough. But the water that was in it was like a tan-colored split pea soup, thick tan. Yep. And people were drinking from it. People in the church were drinking from it. People that I know were drinking from it, and they were defending it. And I sat with somebody recently that had been living at that trough and said, Pastor, it is costing me my family. It's costing me my family. And uh, I tried to tell the people, but listen, I'm screaming, I've got, that's not water. I've got real water for you. And they were de devoted to that old trough. And I thought, oh God, people are in bondage and don't even know it. Whatever you can't surrender.
surrender to God. And whatever you're not willing to surrender to God is an idol. It's just that simple. God may ask you to give something to him just to test your heart to say, do you love this more than you love me? Just like he did Abraham with his son. And sometimes God will say, because he's drawing us closer, do you, do you love do you love me more than you love your image, your reputation, anything whatsoever? We sing songs like, take the whole world and give me Jesus. Do we really, really, really mean that? Could we sing right now, take the whole world? And I'll tell you something, when God, when God, God doesn't cause it, but God will use it when things get stripped away from you. And I sit with people time and time again, and listen to me, those that don't want to hear what I'm saying. Sit with me and the people that I've sat with in the last 30 days who have come to the end of feeding at a trough and have said, it's cost me too much. And they come to me and they're asking me to help put it back together again. I, then, then I would be derelict in my duties to tell you, you've got to stay away from that trough. If it's got a hold on you or you love it more than you love God or you're not, I don't care what it is. If it's your TV time, if you're addicted to soap operas, hello? Hello. If God said, I want you to take the time that you spend watching soap operas and go pray, but you can't do that, you need to settle that with God and say, God, I love you more than I love soap. I don't care what Luke and Laura are doing. Or I don't care what, care what the, the Corwin family or Parrot, whatever their names are. Uh, Corrington, Carrington family. Is that what it is? Uh, I don't care what the Carringtons are doing or whatever their names are. Uh, I would rather have you. If you would rather have Jesus than the privilege of defending yourself. And you say, God, I'll trust you with the outcome. God will take whatever you surrender to him. He may give things back to you. But he wants to be able to have the privilege of you loving him completely. See, I can't bring another woman into my relationship with Mary Gay. Hello? She did this. <laughs> said I would. And she grew up with seven brothers. She knows how to tow the 12 gauge. I've seen her. And and if 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 I told her, oh honey, I, I met a, a lady friend and you know, I just like spending time with her and talking to her. Number one, it's not going to happen. Number two, how is she supposed to take that? And yet we say to the Lord so many times, I found another. I found another. And he's visiting us and he just spoke prophetically and said, I'm shaking everything up. I'm not saying that everything is sin, but I'm telling you that everything that you put before God is a sin. And he's causing us to take a look at those things and say, do you love me more than you love these things? Amen? All right. Well, Mary Gay's messed things all up, I tell you. Uh, Frank, come on up here. And um, I don't know if y'all heard the news. No, he, he and Mary Lou are not expecting But they had been expecting something, and uh, the Lord did it, right? Just, just make, make Jesus look good briefly. Yes. That was a prophetic word this morning you heard. He's turning me around. That's right. And he's turned it around for the ministry that we're involved in. Many of you, you're supposed to be know, we, we, I run a ministry called Operation Blessing, which is a food pantry. We've been around 31 years. And uh, he's turned it around. He's turned it around. You know, for 31 years, we were in a little dinky body shop space. And the Lord says in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or lack of wisdom. They have no wisdom or vision, excuse me. Did you tell them what, what you're talking about? They may not know about Operation Blessing. Oh, <laughs> yes. We're, uh, Operation Blessing is a, well, we're a food pantry. And we've been ministering to people for 31 years. Uh, and we see sometimes as many as 150 people come to Christ every month. 
I mean, there's not a month that goes by that we don't see. As a matter of fact, we had this past month, we had 28. And I was talking to the Lord and I said, Lord, we only had 28. He said, that's the problem with you. He says, you're in a different paradigm than I am. You see, when one person comes to Christ, everything in heaven is rejoicing. So in our American church, I'm sorry, Pastor, in our American church, we're used to everything being titanic proportion. For instance, if we invest a lot in a revival, and after the revival we get together and say only one person came to Christ, we consider that a failure. But in China, I know Pastor knows, Hudson Taylor went to China for three years. He never saw one person come to Christ. But have you looked at China lately? Yes. Do you know what's going on in China in the underground churches? Do you know what the blood of martyrs has brought? Do you know what getting the preeminence brings? Do you know what I'm even saying? Yes. The Lord has been reminding me as he's reminded him because I heard him saying it. We must be careful about getting the preeminence. It's important, as Jesus said, that if I'm lifted up, yes. I'll draw all men to me. The problem is, we like to draw, we like to be lifted up. And there's a lot of us. And you know, Pastor, when you were talking in your class this morning, we've forgotten about the Lordship of Jesus. Do we know what the Lordship of Jesus is? The Lordship of Jesus is understanding that he's king and that he's sovereign. And you don't tell him what you want to do, he tells you what he wants you to do. And we forget that sometimes in our American society, but I don't want to get on that, on that leg. I just want to say for 31 years, and I've been there four years, I had a lot of namesayers, a lot of soothsayers that said, it'll never happen, you'll never get a building, uh, it's impossible, and everybody knows to him that believes all things are possible. One of the names of the Lord in the Old Testament is Baal Perazim. How many know what that means? It means the God of the breakthrough. And God is a God of the breakthrough. So that word that was brought, that prophetic word, that he's turning it around, if you've been praying for 31 years, I'm here to tell you, God's turning it around. Because he turned it around for us. Listen, we have a lawyer, and he's not even a believer, and he's a CPA, and he told me, I have never seen anybody get a building with no money. I mean, he said, I don't understand it. How can a bank give you a loan, and you have executed all your money in the, in, the, in the ordeal, and you have nothing in the bank to stand back on? Because I never seen anything like it. He said, where, where do you get this kind of faith? I said, I don't know how much we have. It might only be a, a mustard seed size, but it's able to move the mountain. A word to you, Jeremiah 33.3, call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things to come. We give God the glory. And I appreciate the pastor giving you a minute. You have no idea, this is not the one in, in travail for 31 years, waiting to deliver. And you know, we can't get our eye on the building because we know how easy that is to do. We have to get our eyes on the goal, and the goal is to reach souls, to touch people, to see lives changed. So we're not going to try to get into our building, and it's easy to get, you know, when you've been out of building for a long time, you get into it. There's been nights I can't even sleep, you know, I'm so excited, I'm thinking, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. And the Lord says, Frank, you can't do anything without me. <laughs> you can try to do something on your own, and it will fall apart. He said, but you know what? It's not about doing, it's about being. We have to understand who we are in Christ. And I know our pastor talks about it all the time. I don't think we really get it sometimes. But I just want to say, I'm going to close this. Just say, I give God the glory. And for those of you that support an Operation Blessing, there's many in this church that support it with your prayers, with your finance. I say, God bless you. Thank you for sowing a seed into a ministry. You know, our ministry is to kiss. Yeah. Oh, he said, we are going to tell you we got the building. We did get the building. about six weeks ago on family radio and asked me, well, what are you going through? I said, well, we're now facing the cityites, the stateites, and the federalites. And he said, that's kind of funny. I said, well, it's not funny because they face the Amalekites, the Jebusites, and all the rest of the ites. We're facing some of those ites right now. We really are. 
And again, there's all kinds of problems about the tax that the money brings in, so uh, that the building brings in. So they, they, they've already set up the obstacles, but I tell you this. I'm telling you, it's amazing. I, if I had, if you, if you let me have two hours and you could stay awake for two hours, and I told you the things that I have seen God do in this building, I have, you know, I had a church at one time myself. We went through that process. This far surpasses anything. The Lord said the land of the rain will be greater than the former. Right. I'm telling you, I have seen so many things. Here, let me just share one little thing. One thing, okay? This was exciting to me. We had an auction company that came into the building because it was a foreclosed building and they were they were going to auction off all the stuff that was in the building. Well, they had a lot of offices in there and there's some pretty decent furniture in there. My furniture is all junk. I mean, I have junk. You call what I have at my place junk, really. You wouldn't even put it in your doghouse. I'm serious if you had one. It's really junk. So I told the auction guys it would be nice if you could leave some best for us because you guys are going to sell the flies on the wall. I know you're going to sell everything. <laughs> So he said, well, we'll see what we can do. So I walked over to the first day of the auction, went in, and when I was walking in, they were carrying desks out to another building across the street that somebody had bought. And I went, oh, Lord, I thought we were going to get those desks. And the Lord said, Frank, don't worry about it. So I just threw it off. Later in the day, I'm almost done. Later in the day, about 1230, I was getting ready to open up the pantry. My son-in-law came by, blew the horn. It was his birthday. He works two blocks away from me at a garbage station, and he's a computer guy, and I sold one of his computers. So I said, you know what? It'd be nice for me to run over there and give him a hot birthday hunt and give him his hundred bucks. So I went over to the yard, in that stinky, smelly yard with trash piled up everywhere. I watched these guys throwing desks out the back of a truck onto the ground. So I went over there and I, and I said, hey, I gotta go over there. I went over there and I said, listen, uh, what are you guys throwing on the ground here? They said, well, we're throwing desks out. What do you want? I said, well, when my son-in-law works there, I mean, these things look like they're brand new. He said, well, to tell you the truth, they came out of a bank, the bank bought all new furniture. And he said, I said, is there anything wrong with this stuff? He said, this stuff is like brand new. He said, we're just drawing it out. I said, well, let me come up on the truck. So I went up on the truck. And I looked, and I said, I'll take everything you got on the truck. He said, what do you mean you'll take everything? I said, I'll, I can't see it all, but I'll take it all. He said, well, who are you? I said, well, I run a food pantry two blocks away. Follow me. I'll take it all off. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. So we brought it back, and I got 13, probably $300 chairs that you sit in behind your desk. I got 30 other chairs. I got filing cabinets. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Frank, didn't I tell you I turned your ashes into beauty? And I said, Lord, I called everybody on the board, and I told them, you won't believe this. And the Lord told me, he said, you know, I said, Lord, I never thought I have to go to a trash dump to get my stuff, you know. But I mean, that's just one little story about the things that God has been doing. So we're very excited about, obviously, what God has done. And uh, as, as Andre Crouch was saying this song, to God be the glory. Because it really is the Lord. Thank you for your support and thank you, Pastor, for giving me. I only said I'd take two minutes. I know I took seven. Uh, but anyway, God bless you and pray for Operation Blessing. We have plans to overcome, but He's turning it around.
the things that we could do, like, uh, well, I don't know what those would be because we've done just about everything. But see, I just happen to trust God. Yes. Yes. And I know that you prepared your tithe, your offering today. But I want you to just believe God. I, I believe that by the time that I leave today and they hand me the figures, that somehow God is just going to do what he said he would do and build this church. And your tithe is God's. It does belong to God, and that's where God puts the blessing. But offerings is where God is able to uh, bring a breakthrough. Seed is so is so uh, unique. Seed it looks so insignificant, but you plant it, and it, when it begins to grow, it will break solid rock in half because there's potency within. Tithing has that blessing on it, but the seed of an offering has the ability, because God blessed it, to be just like Jesus, who was referred to as seed in a dry ground. You can sow seed in a, a recession or a depression and get the same fruit as you would if it was the best of seasons, because it's the power that's in the promise of seed, and that's what offerings are. And so I'm going to ask Mary Gay to come and, I'm, and, and, and minister in song, and during that time, just ask the Lord what he would have you to do extra today. And if he put something in your heart and mind, it wouldn't be faith if you couldn't do it. And that's just a way for God to test our hearts to say, do we really trust him? And if so, I believe with all of my heart that we'll leave here today and, and I'll be able to tell you next week, here's what God did in a supernatural way. While you're at it, I want you to also declare every day Raise your hand and say, God, I thank you for a paid-off church. Because I'd like to take $10,500 and put it into ministry of doing something outside. And uh, so right now we're in an aquarium, and we got a pretty aquarium. But I'd rather be fishing. Do you know what I mean by that? Uh, did I tell you about the guy that sat beside me on the airplane uh, Wednesday night when I was flying home? I didn't, did I? Some of you did but here's ministry. Uh, I, I had uh, I'd logged in online. I was flying from Orlando to Charlotte and then Charlotte back up here. I'd stayed a few days in Charlotte. And uh, I was logging in online, checking my seat, and I was asking for a an exit row seat and because there's more room. So I kept hitting it and kept saying error. Kept hitting it because it was a late night flight. We didn't leave until about 11 Tuesday night. And so when I got to the airport and printed my boarding pass, it had given me an exit row seat on the other side, and there's only two seats there. So you had all kinds of room. And a young fellow came and sat down beside me, and we talked and we talked and talked for a long time. And after a while, he said, well, by the way, he said, I don't really like you. What do you do? I like that. And I said, well, I'm a pastor. And he said, oh, no. He said, you've got to be kidding me. I said, no, is that not a good thing? And he turned over the book he was reading. And he says, why God is a bad God and religion kills people. And he said, I'm Mitch and I'm an atheist. And for the next hour and a half, me and Mitch talked. And he said some rough things. And I said, Mitch, you can't offend me. I said, uh, I would prefer having a relationship with you rather than you being able to offend, having the privilege of you offending me. And I said, I've got hot buttons, but they're all under lock and key, so you can say anything that you want to. And it's not going to change the thing about how I feel about you and how God feels about you. Matter of fact, God loves you as much as he does me. And he said, that's not possible. Oh, yes. And so that's ministry. Amen. God messed up my schedule so that I could spend an hour, and I messed up Mitch's mind. He's brilliant. And I said, Mitch, you're looking under the wrong rock. You are so smart, you're holding God captive to intellect. And you told me you've got faith, so if you just peek under that other rock and stop being a sissy about it and say, God, would you prove that you are there? God will just break out of it and show you. That's doing ministry. What we're doing right here on Sunday morning is to get you built up so that you can go out there. And I wasn't going to do this right now, but we may need to. I'm going to ask Jennifer if she can send somebody to make a bunch of copies of these on the 6th of June, July, or the, well, wait a minute, it's, excuse me, August, 4th of August. All right, all right. 
We're going to have a family fun day. Johnny Darge is going to tell you some stories about how God is using him on the street. You see things in the news, and love the whole Johnny's involved in it, and how that God is, is doing miraculous things. And then we're going to let you out at 1130 to go outside and have a good time. We're going to have a car show. And it's not time for you to preach to anybody. It's not time for you to ask them if they're saved because they will tell you, no, I shop at Waltz. <laughs> they don't know what you're talking about, but it is a, an opportunity for you to meet Jesus and to make a connection to people. But I want them to make copies of this and let you take some of these, either hand them to people. If you know people that have car shows, go ahead and take them and invite them. Say, we want you to come that Sunday. We'll have a car show, all kinds of things set up for the children and so forth. And it's a way for us to at least get outside of our aquarium and get out there. Right. So don't lay out that day. It, it'll, be, it'll be a wonderful day. But that's what's dear to the heart of God. He loves you, and we've already been pumped up and primed enough that we ought to be able to change the world. So take this time as Mary Kay comes to minister in song and let the Lord speak to you. And if he puts a, a generous figure in your heart and mind that you've not thought of before, just take that as being a word from God and trust Him and see what He will do. For some people, that might be $5. For others, it might be a lot more. But whatever God directs you, I know that you'll be faithful. Now, here's, here's the, most great, the greatest Christian that I know. It's the greatest Christian that I know. And I need that with all of my heart. And what she sings and lives and is going to present to you is, is, is pure and in fact. Worship her. Could you give the Lord a hand? Thank you. Along this word. Thank you. So grateful for his mercy. Amen. See you. 
I receive you. And right now, I have new life in Christ. I am born again. Amen. Now, if you prayed that for the first time, see me after church. I want to give you some information. And then, since all of you are staying for lunch, make your way to the bookstore. Dan, uh, Dave has new Bibles and some of the most phenomenal new reading materials. Here's one, Growing Your Faith by Giving It Away. New copies of the Prayer of Jabez, and then one by Eugene Peterson, who authored the Message Bible, A Long Obedience. All of that is new. There's about 50 new items out there. So make your way through, and then on into the gymnasium, and we'll have lunch together. Is, all, is it all right to let you go a little bit early today? Don't look so happy about that. God bless you. I love you. Hope to see you Wednesday night, ne definitely next Sunday. Friday night for therapy. Uh, elders meeting Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Shake hands and love on one another.